you will, to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Now we'll get to Ephesians 3 in just a second. What I've, what I've started off with is the DNA, the role of the DNA, and the, what we saw in the satanic attempt to corrupt what God's doing as he's, as he's established man as the one who's going to come and reclaim the earth, and Satan seeking to corrupt him, and he does it at the level of, the, of, of DNA. He does it right at the level where God created man for his purpose. So it is with the Word of God. And Satan seeks to corrupt God's Word. And just like we, you know, we talk today about genetically modified organisms, GMOs and so forth, there's a GMO attack on the Word of God, on the book, that's just like the one that was attacked on man. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Well, start in verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Does that sound like things are going to get better or worse? You know, people say, you dispensationalists, you just think the world's going to be bad, bad, bad. Well, okay. I just think that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I don't actually have my head in the sand. I don't live in a utopia. I'm not, trying, I'm not looking for nirvana. That's the social engineers out there in the world that have no idea what's going on, they're willing to spend your money to try to fix the world. They're willing to send your kids to war to try to fix the world and make it a utopia the way they want it to be. Paul says, that thing out there is headed for, the, headed for the, 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 a wreck. And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. What are you supposed to do? I mean, you look around you and you see things falling apart. You know, you have little lulls in time. American history is one of the oddest periods of time. The last 300 years is one of the oddest periods of time in all of human history. America is a blip, an oddity, not the standard of human history. And it's the fruit, politically, economically, socially, of the Protestant Reformation. And all that's wonderful, but all that's gone. So as you see the culture changing and, and the bottom falling out, the psalmist says, what shall the righteous do if the foundation be destroyed? Well, here's what you do, verse number 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing whom thou hast learned them. You better learn some things out of this book, know, how to, know where they came from, from the word of God rightly divided, so you've got something to stand on when everything else goes away. You need to make sure your children have that. You need to make sure your family's built on that. Then you need to, you need to love your kids enough to get, get that to them. You need to love your grandkids enough to get that to them. You need to love your neighbor's kids enough to get that to them. You need to make that what your life is about, what your family's about, what your ministry's about, because that's the only place there's going to be stability. Some people think, well, I've got a big retirement program, and I'll get my big 401K, and I'll get my... Listen, just like that, it can be gone. I was in Michigan yesterday. Ga I put gasoline in a car yesterday for two dollars and seventy cents. Yeah, wow, that's about sixty cents less than you're paying for it, isn't it? You know, next state over, and you say, "How can that be?" Well, welcome to the world. <laughs> and I look at that. You know, I can. There's some of you folks sitting here like me. You can remember gas being twenty cents. Now you know what that means. That means that doesn't mean the gas is more. It means your dollar is worth less. You understand the economics of that? It takes three dollars today to buy what twenty-five cents would buy forty years ago. That means three dollars today is worth twenty-five cents in 1970 money. Well, if you had a bunch of dollars, would you want it to go that way? You see how inflation steals your money? You save money. And you think you've got money. And all of a sudden, your $3 is only worth 25 cents in purchasing power. And that's all money's worth. That's what it's for. It's what can it buy? What can it get you? And if a loaf of bread costs a quarter, my dad, I can remember my dad in the Depression, talking about in the Depression, 
him and my mom went to the store to buy a nickel loaf of bread, and, they didn't have, and it went up six cents, and they had to come home without it because they didn't have that extra penny. Well, you don't think that can happen because you've got pl plenty of pennies in your pocket, but if that loaf of bread went up to $5 and all you had was pennies, how did I get into all that? 